Hi, my name is Jino King, and I'm a Senior Solutions Engineer for ArcGIS Indoors at S3. In this ArcGIS Indoors demonstration, we'll be looking at creating preliminary transitions in the Indoors database model. A network in ArcGIS Indoors is an essential component of creating indoor mapping and routing applications. The network is a set of pathways among all the rooms and assets in your indoor spaces. It includes transitions between the floors and landmarks for navigation. The network is used to create a routing services for end users. The previous video covered creating a preliminary pathway for indoors database. You have created preliminary pathways for organization. And now you're ready to connect these pathways between floors by adding transitions layer. First, let's create a local scene. Copy preliminary pathways, details, units, levels, and facilities layers, and paste them into the 3D scene. Just to recap, the units layer has Z values based on CAD configuration files, where I specify the relative elevation values of 0, 5, and 10. To stack those indoor floor layers in a 3D scene, I set the layer properties of each layer to use geometry Z values and relative to the ground options inside the elevation tab configurations. One can also tweak the cartographic offset values to avoid all layers overlapping each other on display. If layers do not appear correctly inside the 3D scene, Please review your feature layer's Z values or set different configurations inside the elevations tab to pull correct height record fields. So let's run Generate Floor Transitions through a processing tool. The tool is available inside the ArcGIS Indoors toolbox under the Indoors Network toolset. Select the facilities for the input facilities feature. Select the units for the transition unit features. As for the stairway unit expression, I created a WHERE clause to select stairway values from the use type field. I created a WHERE clause for the elevator unit expression to select elevator value from the use type field. The preliminary pathway feature layer is used for the pathway features. For the target transitions, I selected the preliminary transition feature layer from the preliminary feature dataset. The elevator delay is the average number of seconds you expect taking the elevator to another floor will add to the transit time of someone creating a route from one place to another in this building. I'm using 30 seconds. Lastly, the checkbox for delete existing transition is helpful to remove the previous output. Once the tool is processed, the ArcGIS Pro automatically adds the preliminary transition feature layer to the scene. If I tilt the scene, I can see four vertical lines created. Two features are the stairway transition lines that connect from the first to the second, then the third floor and the other two lines connect from the first floor elevator to the third floor elevator. Let's open up the table and inspect a little. Based on the tool configuration, those two lines transition types are specified as elevator slash wheelchair lift coded domain value with both direction allowed coded domain values for the travel direction type. One can change those domains based on the building circumstances. Now, let's look into transition lines for staircases. The straight vertical lines for elevators represent the actual up and down the passage of the elevator well, but not the staircases. The vertical transition lines for staircases should be reshaped to represent the U-shaped stairs in this case. So let's start editing, starting from the first floor. I enabled the edit vertices for the preliminary transition feature layer 
and selected the vertical line of the first floor. I clicked the end vertice, dragged it to snap to the pathway line where the staircase starts. Now, let's toggle to the th second floor. Select the other end of the transition line and snap to the preliminary pathway where the staircase step starts. Let's add a vertex in the transition line by right-clicking the edge. If I zoom out, we can see that the transition line is now connected to the first and second floor staircase ends. Select the newly created vertex, drag it down, and snap to the very end of the preliminary pathways on the first floor. Add another vertex between the first floor and second floor transition line's edge, and snap it to the preliminary pathway layer on the other side of the landing area. Now, let's look at the Z values of those vertices from the Edit Vertices pane. As you can see, there is a 5 meter height difference between the first starting and end vertices. I now have to specify two middle vertices on the landing floor. I added the halfway height values between the floor levels. And now, the transition features resemble the U-shaped staircases and added the horizontal length to it. I have done the same for the transitional staircase line between floor levels 2 and 3 with proper Z values for the staircase landing area. Make sure all the transition layers lines are snapped to the preliminary pathway lines. For enhanced visual experience, one could add more vertices and create escalier lines that match the actual number of stairs. For our final step, let's update the 3D length attribute field for the preliminary transitions feature layer. I panned the mouse to the length in 3D attribute title and right click the access and calculate geometry. For the property value, I selected length 3D, which enables length unit box. When I look at the layer property source, I can tell that it's based on meter unit, so I selected meters and current math coordinate systems to calculate the values. After completing the vertices geometry and table edits, save and clear the selections. If necessary, zoom, pan, and tilt the scene around to review the preliminary transitional lines. This concludes the creation of preliminary transitions, the second step to creating the indoor network. Thank you for watching.